You have enough knowledge to talk a bit of software talk now and write some basic applications that use variables and display things to the user. But it's now time to write some real world applications and strengthen that knowledge more. I will teach you about logical thinking and the importance of structuring code in certain ways and thinking about code in logical structures. As our first full application project, we are going to build an application that asks the user for their date of birth and then tells them the day of the week they were born on, as well as some extra information. I will create this application as if it were a real project for a real client. I will use the most up-to-date code, up-to-date language features, fully documented and commented and ready for release. I will teach you all the methods, terms and coding practices along the way. Instead of teaching you individual features and methods that aren't used in the modern world, Instead, you will learn how I do this in a day-to-day -day job and you will be taught the most up-to-date way. In this lesson, you will learn about reading text from the user and parsing that text into a specific type for storing dates. Parsing means to take some information and interpret it in another way. In programming, this is most typically strings. We can take a string and parse it to an integer, for example. Then we can apply mathematical operations such as times, divide, addition and subtraction. Or we can take a string of a date and pass it to a specific type that holds date information. This allows us to get information in one format and convert it to another format that's more useful for a developer to use and consume. The best way to understand this is to see it in action. So let's jump in now and write some code. We will start by creating a new project in Visual Studio. It will be a .NET Core console application. Let's call it Birthday Calculator. We start with nothing new here, just a method that introduces our robot that will calculate the user's date of birth. Below the main method, create a public static method that returns nothing and we will call it introduce savvy. Savvy is the name of our robot in this application. There are no parameters needed, so we can just open and close the parentheses and open the code block. Now let's call the console.writeLine method and pass in a string we want to write out to the user so they know what to do. Remember the console.writeLine writes a line of text to the console window that the user is interacting with. Back to the main method now, let's remove the console.writeLine call and replace it with invoking our introduce savvy method. Press F5 to check our code compiles, runs and outputs what we expect so far. As we can see it does, it starts by telling the user, Hi, I'm Savvy, I'm really good at guessing the day of the week you were born on. Now let's move on to a new method that will return the user's date of birth by asking the user to enter the date of birth. Below the introduce Savvy method, make another public static method. This time it will return a value. For this, we want to use a new built-in type for storing dates. This is called date time offset. Do not use date time. This is legacy and can cause issues with time zones. Always use date time offset where possible. Don't worry about the whys for now. Just that date time offset is the type that can store dates in time and comes with a whole range of helper methods and properties for getting information out of a date, as you will see in the coming lessons. Let's call this method ask for date of birth. Again, it needs no parameters, so we will just open and close the parentheses and open the code block. The first thing this method should do is inform the user that we are asking them for their date of birth. Let's write that in a console.writeLine statement. 
Next, we now want to read in what the user types so that we can do something with that information. Just like this method is returning a value, the console.writeLine method also returns a value. We will use this method to read a line from the console so that we know what the user has typed and assign that value to a new variable. We've called the variable user text. This is because it's the user's text that they have entered. We always want variable names to be as explicit as possible. Don't worry about long variable names. It's more important to have accurate names than shorthand terms for variable names. A thing to note about console.readline. The readline method will prevent the console application from continuing to run to the next line of code until the user has pressed enter. An enter character is determined as a new line in the console, hence the name read line. It reads the next line of characters from the standard input stream. This means it reads any text typed into the console up until the point when the user presses enter, and then everything typed before that is returned and stored in user text. As always, it's important to see and prove this assertion instead of taking my word for it. Put a breakpoint on the console.read line. For now, so this function works, we will just return date time offset minimum value. And back in main, we will also invoke the new method ask for date of birth. Press F5 to run this code. And as we can see, it outputs, can I start by asking you what your date of birth is? And then we hit the breakpoint console.readline. Remember that this line of code has not yet run, but is about to be. Press F10 to step over this line and to go to this next line here. Notice this time, nothing is highlighted in yellow, and instead our application is brought into focus. That is because the console.readline method waits indefinitely until the user presses enter. So now we have nothing here highlighted in yellow. We are not broken into code. Go back to the console and enter anything. I will type hello and press enter. Notice how focus is brought back to Visual Studio and the code has now moved to the next line. Hover over the variable user text and we can see the value hello has been stored. We can also see it in the locals window here that user text has returned hello. Press F5 to finish the application and let's press F5 and do that once more. This time, let's just press enter without entering any text. Notice this time, user text is an empty string. It is a valid string, but with no content. This is an important thing to remember when thinking about the expected possible return values of console.readline. I'm in the UK, and so my system is set up to expect dates in the format of the day, then the month, then the year, followed by a forward slash. This is important as what we want to do next is get the user to enter their date of birth in this format and then try and convert it to a date time offset using parsing. Let's update the right line to output the current machine's local date time format so the user knows how to enter it. We find that information if we type culture info, hold down the control key and press dot to give us suggestions. And this will automatically suggest to add using system.globalization. If we press enter, all it does, if we scroll up to the top, is it adds this using namespace. This allows us access to the culture info class, which we can now press dot, 
get the current culture, which is the culture of this machine, meaning the language, information about the language on this machine. Is it English? Is it French? Is it Spanish? And from that current culture, we can get the date time format. And from the date time format, we can get something called the short date pattern. This is the date time format that we want to enter on this machine to make a valid date. Press F5 again to see what this is. And we can see here, this is my machine's current culture of a date. It expects the date first, then a forward slash, then the month, then a forward slash, and then the year. If you are on an American machine, you will have the date and month the opposite way around. This date format is important when we come to do parsing. By default, when we parse a string to a date time offset, it will use this current culture information here, and specifically the date time format that we will use. So we want the user to enter it into the correct format. So how do we take this variable, user text, and convert it to a date time offset that we need to return? This is where we use something called parsing. In C Sharp, it comes with built-in parsing for almost all types, so this is very easy. You can find the parse methods on the types themselves. See this by typing int and then dot, and we can see we have parse. It also mentions that it converts a string representation of a number into a 32-bit integer value. For example, we could call int.parse 444, which is a string, and we could set it to my int. This would parse the type of string 444 and convert it into an integer of 444. If we move this line above here, put a breakpoint after and run the application. We can see my int is correctly an integer and of type 444. We have just passed a string of 444 into an integer. As we want a date time offset type, we want to use date time offset dot pass. Notice it is only asking for one parameter, a string, and also returns a date time offset. This is perfect for us. Let's pass in our user text. Put the keyword return in front of this. Remove the default value below. And this is our function complete. Let's place a breakpoint here and remove the breakpoint above so we can see what the user enters and what is about to be given to the date time pass. And then to see the return value, we want to give it a variable up here. Let's give this variable the name users date of birth. And now we are accepting the return value of our method and storing it in the variable user's date of birth. And let's place a breakpoint right before the application ends so that we know when this value is set, we can inspect it in the debugger. Press F5 to run the application. Read the text telling us what is your date of birth. I will enter the first of the first 88. Notice that we don't need to do double digits single digits also pass correctly. This is a valid date string. And now press enter. We can see our breakpoint here gets hit. If we hover over user text or check out the locals window, we can see the value we just typed into the console is here. 1 forward slash 1 forward slash 88. So the 1st of January 88. The date time offset dot pass code is about to be run. So we can press F10 to step over that line, and it takes us to the closing code block of our method, which means the next line when we press F10 will return us up here to the main method. 
We can see here the user's date of birth at the minute is unset. It's the default value of date time offset dot min value because we haven't yet invoked this line. And if we press F10 again now to accept the value and set it, it's updated our variable to be correctly the first of the first 1988. We can also hover over the variable to see that. If you expand the variable in the locals window, you will see it has many more properties and methods inside of it. We will come to these in future lessons. So our application has just successfully parsed a string written by the user into a date time offset variable type that we can now use to extract the information we want. That wasn't hard, was it? With just one line of code. Behind the scenes, the parse method did a lot of work for us, which is great. Even though this task was easy, don't let it fool you into thinking that parsing strings is easy. When I was 10, I wrote my first math parser that converted a string such as 1 plus 4 times 3 and output the answer as a mathematical result. I didn't know much then, and I didn't have Google or books or anybody to talk to. I was just hammering away at code and trying to figure it out. I figured out how to do it by converting the string to character arrays, then converting each character to an integer, and then finally comparing those integer values to known ASCII codes. I knew nothing of ASCII codes at the time, I simply started by converting the character A and the character 1 and many other characters into integers and looking for patterns, such as the letter B was 1 above the letter A and the number 2 was 1 above the number 1. And then one by one I formed a logical calculation engine, looping each character one by one and parsing it in the right order. What I found out many years later is I had created what is actually an industry standard way of parsing strings. The moral of the story is don't let a single line of code fool you into thinking not much is going on. And as such, this method can fail in a way that you may not expect. There is one problem with the code we have written. What happens if we enter something that is not a date? Let's try it out. Let's press F5 and enter hello instead of a date. Press enter and then press F10 now to try and parse the text hello. Now you can see there's a problem. Our application is throwing an error, a format exception error, with the information telling us the string hello world was not recognized as a valid date time. We will cover throwing errors in future lessons. Needless to say, our program will not work this way. After having an exception thrown, if we do not handle it, our application will crash. Press F5 and see our application has crashed and output a nasty message to the user. Instead of calling parse and handling the exception, which is something we will also cover in future lessons, there is another method we can use. We will cover this in the next lesson.